now we will take time for a few questions and what I want to do is actually spend about uh, 10 minutes uh, doing an ER design interactively. Now, if this were a classroom, it would be uh, with a limited number of students, it would be very nice to just have a show of, uh, you know, let people suggest topics and then I pick one of them. Uh, since I cannot talk to uh, many of you, I cannot hear many of you at the same time, what I will do now is take a few general questions and at some point I am going to say enough general questions. At this point, I want suggestions for something which we want to model using an ER model. At that point, further questions, I will take only suggestions for something which we want to design. And I will pick one of those and then we will do the design. So, now let us take some questions. If you look at the um, section uh, relation of the university schema, we see that uh, most of the columns there uh, are being referenced as the foreign keys. Now, <laughs> we know that foreign key as such does not put an index, does not create an index uh, of its own, but it creates something in akin to an index. Now, my question to you, sir, is that uh, with such with such a design, and we uh, uh, and we also know that. Uh, uh, when such a kind of a relationship is put into uh, a massive select operations, every time uh, an update or a select or a delete operation takes place, the relation integrity has to be ensured. So, would this design be considered as a good design for a for a for a, for a heavy uh, heavy performance point of view? The question is that in the uh, relational design that we have, uh, we have uh, you know uh, many attributes which together form the primary key and correspondingly in other relations we have many attributes which together form a foreign key. So, now uh, the question is uh, if we have such a design checking if uh, the foreign key constraint whenever there is an update uh, could have a higher cost because we have to uh, look at a number of attributes and see if they all together are present in the other table. So, is it a good design from the performance perspective and the answer to that is uh, if you wanted to focus on just performance, uh, there is an alternative uh, which would have been to uh, create a fake identity for every single entity, uh, which is a key, which is uh, a very small key, like maybe an integer. So, now uh, we would have a section uh, ID, which is different from what we have. In our case, the section ID is just enough to distinguish different offerings in a given semester. The alternative, which we actually did consider when we came up with this schema was to have a int id for the section which is unique across all course offerings. And then uh, the foreign keys uh, in takes and teaches would be much simpler because there would be a single id referencing section. And indeed that is a perfectly valid uh, approach and many database designers use that approach to keep a primary key which does not have a meaning externally. It is just a number which we create inside of the database. Um, so, why did we choose this? Uh, no major reason, it is just that we did not want to create another fake identifier when there was enough external information to uniquely identify a section uh, which people knew about. We did not see the need to create a new uh, ID which is internal to the database. Uh, so, that is a choice which we made. We could have gone the other way. I cannot say that one design is wrong and the other is right. Both are reasonable approaches. So, if your focus was on performance, maybe the other approach would have been better. Does that answer your question or do you have any follow up? I think the uh, we have been disconnecting people because of echo, uh, but let me uh, just answer one more part of the question which was on. Uh, indices and so forth. So, uh, what indices are created when you declare a foreign key? So, normally an index would be created on every primary key. In addition, an index should be created on every foreign key declaration, so that the thing can be efficiently handled. Uh, what do I mean by this? Um, if I delete a particular uh, course and there is a text uh, or a section tuple which is referring to this course. I should prevent the deletion of the course. How do I know if there is a section or uh, takes or whatever other tuple referring to this course? 
So the way to find that efficiently is to have an index on these tables on the on the foreign key attributes. So if I have that index, I can quickly look it up to see if somebody is referring to this tuple and if so, prevent the deletion or if I am going to have a cascading deletion, I know which tuples to delete cascading or which tuples to update cascading. So uh, it is generally good to have such an index and most database systems actually create such an index automatically on a foreign key because it is very important. Okay, so that was the complete answer to the question from Srinagar. Now let us go to who is this now? Mahatma Gandhi, Noida. Hello. Yeah, sir. Uh, can we have multiple indexing? Okay. Or oh, you want an index on in multiple in attributes? Yes, you can. Uh, just like we have composite keys with multiple attributes, you can have an index which has multiple attributes. Not a problem at all. It is standard. Uh, like I said, I am very happy to answer questions later, but at this point, I want to do a small exercise on ER design. I only want suggestions. I do not want questions right now. I am seeing a few online music store. Uh, can you see it here? Uh, there are many coming up quickly. Facebook, okay. Somebody has suggested Facebook many times. Uh, that is not a bad thing to consider. I am not an expert on Facebook, I do not use it that much. Another good suggestion is Moodle. Uh, why don't we do Moodle? That uh, gives a little more depth than Facebook. Uh, so let us take Moodle, that is a good suggestion. Moodle is very big, you know, I am not claiming we can uh, do everything in Moodle in a very short time, but let us take a few aspects of Moodle. Now um, ideally, uh, you know, I should get feedback from you on what are the entities and what are the relationships. So, you know, let us do that. Uh, use chat to suggest uh, what are the entities and uh, relationships which uh, one might use for the Moodle scenario. Uh, yeah, there are many more suggestions, good suggestions. I am seeing Aadhaar card, railway reservation, uh, online unit test, election uh, commission, stock trading, hotel management. There is a huge, huge number, timetable management, all wonderful suggestions. Uh, but uh, let us pick on Moodle now. So at this point, I only want suggestions on what are the entities and relationships that we might use in Moodle. Uh, please stop suggesting other alternatives and just suggest what are the entities and the relationships in Moodle. So I am seeing a few suggestions. Course is an option for an entity. Uh, user, provider, I am not sure what is provider, but maybe instructor. Quizzes, um, yeah, that is good. Any more? I am waiting to get a few more suggestions. Assignment, yes, that is an important thing. A post is another, absolutely. Uh, we have something about centers, files, grades. Okay, there are quite a few. Uh, so now, um, timetables, so there are many, many more suggestions. I am going to uh, switch back to uh, the whiteboard and I, I won't be able to see your suggestions for some time now. Okay. So what we are doing is Moodle ER diagram and we are going to list the entities. We had course, we had users. Note that uh, we are not differentiating between instructor and teacher, uh, sorry, students at this point. Uh, if you are familiar with Moodle, you know that people can have roles. Somebody can be an instructor in one course, a TA in another, and a student in a third course. Uh, so uh, we cannot divide users on this basis. Uh, that is uh, an attribute of a relationship. Uh, then we have um, assignments. Then we have uh, posts and uh, we have uh, probably a few more entities. Uh, if we think of some, we will get back to it. Then we have relationships. So what are some of the relationships one could think of? We have a relationship between course, user. 
and we will see what are the attributes of this relationship uh, coming up. So, course user is one relationship. Uh, then we have, um, yeah, so we have a relationship between uh, user, uh, okay. So, assignments, uh, we need a little bit more. We have an assignment, which is something which the instructor puts up, and then we have an submission. So, submission is for an assignment. Okay, so, um, a submission implicitly, uh, assignment submission. So, we have a relationship between, uh, let us first start between assignment to submission. So, which assignment was this a submission for? We also have a relationship between user and submission. So, who submitted this? Now, in Moodle, there is just one person who submits in their model, uh, but as we just saw for a project, we actually ought to have multiple uh, users associated with the submission. So, this is something which Moodle uh, probably uh, did not model initially, and we have to work around it by uh, doing some uh, funny stuff, uh, but ideally it should have been a it should have allowed many people to be associated, many students to be associated with one submission. But for the moment, uh, submission is only by one user and we will show that in the cardinality constraints coming up. And then there are posts, user to post, but a post is in the context of a course. So, we have a course to post and for that matter, an assignment is in the context of a course. So, we have a course assignment Now, a course in Moodle is really a course offering, you know they call it a course, but in our uh, university uh, ER notation it is really a course offering. Um, now, Moodle unfortunately does not have a notion of a course which is independent from a course offering uh, and that shows up in a few ways uh, which is a little inconvenient. So, supposing I have a syllabus for the course, when I create a new course offering, I actually have to dump everything from this course offering and copy it again into the new course offering. So, what do we have there? We have redundancy, but in a way it is okay, because uh, generally uh, you know the course offerings do not happen concurrently in one semester, but if you have multiple sections of a course, it can be a little clumsy in Moodle. So, you have a course offering, but there is no notion of a section. Uh, then there is a notion of a grouping, which is kind of like a section, but it is not quite the same thing. Uh, so, it can be a little messy. So, we have done various workarounds. So, currently in this model, there is a notion of groups and then um, certain assignments are associated with groups, uh, which are really sections, which is different from the groups of people who together submit an assignment. Uh, it can be a bit messy. Uh, some years ago, when I was running CS 101 in IIT Bombay, uh, we had uh, about uh, I think 700 students, 600 plus students in the course. So, we broke it up into sections, uh, but in Moodle, we had to create separate courses per section. Maybe there was no better way then, maybe there is a better way now. But what all of this reflects is that Moodle to some extent was uh, created a piecemeal. It started with something and grew and grew, but maybe if uh, a better ER modeling had been done at the beginning, maybe some of the drawbacks of Moodle could have been avoided. Uh, but coming back, uh, we have course assignment, submission, posts. I think we have got the major set of relationships. There are probably a few which I have forgotten. Um, let me see if people have uh, suggested any more. Uh, there are a few questions which have been asked here. Can't we have submission as a a uh, relationship between a user and a, uh, an assignment. That is a good point. Uh, we could have a model submission as a relationship instead of an entity. Uh, why did we choose this? Um, the reason we chose it is that a submission actually persists in the database and uh, it is graded and so forth. Right? There are marks for the submission, there are comments which go back and forth. So, it is probably more convenient to treat it as an entity uh, and uh, you may want to track which a TA graded a particular submission, because there are many submissions, different TAs may grade different submissions. So, if you treat this as a relationship, it becomes a little more messy. So, 
many times uh, it actually makes modeling a lot cleaner if you take what looks like a relationship and turn it into an entity. Uh, this uh, came up in uh, earlier when we had the workshop coordinator. The suggestion there was IPL. Uh, this was before all the IPL scam. I noticed that nobody suggested IPL. Maybe all the scam is having an effect um, uh, over there um, disregarding IPL. It, and it was really not about IPL. It was about any sporting uh, tournament where there are multiple teams and so forth. Uh, there, uh, we wanted to keep track of scores, which, uh, uh, you know, how many runs the uh, person had made in an innings, uh, you know, how did that person get out. Uh, who uh, bowled the ball, who caught it, was he stumped, etc., etc. So there we could have had a relationship, uh, NRE relationship, but it would have been very clumsy. It made a lot more sense to create an entity uh, called dismissal. So it's not related to Moodle, but I, let me just mention it on the side. Okay. All of you know the uh, cricket, uh, so you know that a person gets out in a match, you could think of it as a relationship involving a batsman, bowler, uh, you know, a uh, catch, person who caught it, a uh, person who did stumping, a person who did run out, etc., etc. But that gets very clumsy. How many participants are there in the relationship? It becomes very big. So there it is, it made a lot more sense to turn a dismissal into an entity and then relate the dismissal to uh, player uh, through, uh, you know, who was the batsman, who was the bowler, who was the, uh, you know, person who took the catch and so forth. Coming back, uh, for similar reasons, we decided to treat submission as an entity. So now what we have is a number of entities and relationships. We move to the next screen and start drawing a few diagrams showing the relationships. So we had. Uh, course. Okay, let's first draw a few entity sets. Uh, what would the attributes of course be? Course ID, which Moodle insists on. Then there is a title. There is a short title also. Moodle actually has some such notion. Uh, then it has a start date. end date and many, many more things in there. I am not going to give an exhaustive list. For users, what all uh, does Moodle have? It has a notion of an ID, it has um, email, it has name uh, and then it has many, many more attributes. It has, uh, for example, uh, city or country. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It can have a photo, many more attributes. Uh, then an assignment, okay, what are the attributes of assignment? Is course an attribute of assignment? No, that is going to be a relationship. If we convert it to a, the relational model later on, a course becomes an attribute of assignment perhaps, but at this point there is a relationship between assignment and course, therefore we do not put it in here. But it must have an ID internally, uh, and I'm sure Moodle has some uh, internal ID, some number. In, in fact, it's, uh, you, it can be found if you dig a little deep. So an ID, which is the, by the way, I'm underlining the primary keys for course ID, user and assignment. Uh, what else does it have? It has a title. It has a type. So Moodle has many types of assignments. Uh, it could be upload a file, it could be, uh, you know, uh, fill in online text, it could be uh, one of many, many more types. Uh, it has a start date, it has an end date, it has a uh, allow late submission and many, many more attributes like this. It has attributes like should we notify the grader, uh, you know, so there are a zillion things in there. So that's, those are a few of the entities. I won't show the remaining ones. Now let's show a few relationships. We had user. At this point, the entities I'm going to show by just boxes without the attributes. 
uh, we had um, cores, we had assignment. we had submission okay so now let's show some of the relationships uh, let's call this participant i don't know if you can read this the font size is a little small you probably can't read it uh, but that uh, says participant then we have uh, assignment is part of a course. Uh, now we have to give a name to some of these relationships. So if you can't think of a meaningful name, uh, you can just use a default like course assignment. For uh, brevity, I'm just going to call it course underscore s. And similarly. Uh, submission is related to assignment. Um, so again, what can we call it? Uh, let's call it uh, sub s or some name. You know, we can come up with better names. You should try to come up with meaningful names. So that's a relationship. But a submission is also related to a user. Um, so submitted by. Okay, so uh, we have a number of uh, relationships. So let's uh, wrap up this part of the session. We will extend this ER diagram later when we talk of more ER features. Uh, but uh, for the moment, let's look at what are the cardinality constraints over here and other integrity constraints. Uh, does a user uh, have to be part of only one course? No, it can be in a number of courses. A course can have a number of users. But what we have missed is what is the role of the user in a course? So we have role. Is the user an instructor, a student, a TA, whatever? This is certainly part of Moodle. Then we have a relationship between course and assignment. Would that have any constraints? Yes, absolutely. As an assignment can be for at most one course. So we will put an arrowhead there. And it must belong to a course. It cannot exist independent of a course. So let's put a uh, double line there. Uh, I think I'm, uh, we covered this. This means total participant. Similarly, a submission is part of an assignment and cannot be part of two assignments. Therefore, there's an arrow there and it must be part of an assignment. Therefore, there is a double arrow there. Moreover, a submission must be submitted by somebody. You can't have a submission which was submitted by nobody. So, that participation is also total. So, uh, sorry, I don't know why it's not showing up properly. Yeah, there is a double line between submission and submitted by. Assignment, a submission must be submitted by somebody. Now, in Moodle, a submission is submitted by at most or one user, in fact, exactly one user. So, in the Moodle system, there is a arrow here. But if we were to redesign this, we might get rid of this constraint and allow multiple people to jointly submit an assignment. Of course, how, what is the mechanism for joint submission is another question, um, but it could be done. But the current Moodle, this is how it is. Uh, what, are there any other um, attributes for the submission? Yes, probably uh, there is a time, time stamp when it was submitted. It's probably a meaningful uh, attribute for submitted, um, sorry, uh, no, no, timestamp is for a submission, I, I beg your pardon. I started saying that it's an attribute of submitted by, but if you think about it, it doesn't make sense to have it by, as an attribute of submitted by. You could do it, but it makes more sense to um, have it as an attribute of submission. So let me just cut that out there. Right now, I'm only taking questions or comments about the design which we have done so far. We are going to continue extending this design after we study some more ER features. So I only want to take questions about the ER um, design for Moodle which we are currently working on.
Okay, let's take a few questions. Which one? Prestige Institute Indoor. Prestige, if you have questions or comments, please go ahead. Okay, sir. Uh, actually, sir, uh, we are working on the agriculture apps for the Akash, and uh, for this, uh, we uh, we are created the database apps related to the ER diagram. We have the some uh, confusion related to the ER diagram that uh, the entity is uh, any agriculture farmer and the relationship with the entity is uh, simply their apps, their view information and database storage. So we want to create the some uh, related to the uh, Akash apps, which is uh, based on the agriculture, and uh, we are created the ER based database for this, and uh, we want to centralize the SQL server. So it's possible we are centralized the SQL server so that the over Akash apps or Akash tablet can identify the database for the farmers. I'm not sure what your question was. You're saying that you're building a database for farmers with Akash as the interface. That's good. Um, and how do you build a centralized system which where Akash tablets are just the interface? Uh, well, you can use a web or you can build apps. That uh, you know is exactly the kind of thing we are. Uh, targeting in this course how to build such apps. So uh, we hope that the stuff which we are going to cover will be useful for you. Uh, but right now I uh, want only questions about ER diagrams in particular, the Moodle thing which we are covering right now. If people have any feedback on that, any comments, questions, that's what I want to target right now. Uh, I, it is good that you are building an app. It would be very nice if you actually do your project on this to start it off. Or if you've already been working on it, you can uh, maybe add some extensions to it as part of it. Uh, actually, so the, my confusion is that uh, we are creating the entity for the farmers. And the farmer is being as entity and for the relationship between the entities and uh, uh, things that uh, key, all, the, all the database to be stored in the Akash app. So how can we use the ER di uh, design for this, for the entity and the, for the object? So if you want to build a system like this, the first step is to identify what are the entities of interest and what are the relationships. So you are saying it is a system for farmers. Uh, so the first of all, even before getting into ER design, the very first step is to understand what it is that you are building. What is this system going to do? How is it going to help farmers? Okay, so uh, let us say that uh, you want to keep track of uh, maybe uh, statistics uh, which farmers have generated and maybe incidents and so on. So there's a notion of a farmer, there's a notion of a particular uh, maybe uh, field which the farmer is sowing, maybe there's information about the crops which are sowed and uh, then there's uh, information about uh, the weather, there's information about fertilizers used, there's information about the yield in, that in, in, in a particular uh, season and so forth. So there's a lot of such information around. The question is, which of these are entities, uh, which are uh, relationships and so forth. So in this case, <coughs> let's say that uh, field is an entity. Now there are many things which are done to the field. So maybe uh, you can have a relationship between field and pesticide. Uh, so you might say that a pesticide is an entity, a field is an entity, and you will say that there's a relationship saying that this pesticide was used on this field on this date. That uh, could be a, a reasonable uh, way to look at it. Uh, but if you apply the pesticide several times in a growing season, you may want to track when all it was applied and how much was applied each time. Uh, now you could do that by having a composite, multi-valued composite attribute which says uh, how much pesticide and date, amount and date. And then multiple of these because you may have, uh, you know, used amount X on date X1 and then amount Y on date Y1 and so forth. So you could model that as uh, multi-valued attribute if you want. And uh, then you want, uh, let's say, uh, yield. How much uh, yield did this field give? So that could be a uh, in a particular season. So how do you model that? Uh, maybe uh, that could be. Uh, another multi-valued attribute of the field itself or it could be modeled maybe differently. Uh, there are alternatives. Um, what else would you want to model? Give me some suggestions. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so actually, sir, I plan out uh, for this app is that uh, the entity is to be the, the farmers and the information is to be stored in the form of the relations because uh, we plan out that uh, according to the climates, uh, 
the farmer can understand the what the agriculture crops and everything is to be useful so that the over the indian economy is to be increases as the agriculture sector is to be grown up so the basically aim is that to the database to be stored in the akash apps and uh, the entities the farmer which is uh, connected to the database and the all the information is to be stored in the akash apps uh, as a database so the by using the ai diagram we can easily uh, contact to the farmers and farmer is really getting the information by the akash apps and uh, for the centralized server uh, we are planning out that uh, the uh, we created the one web server in which the all the database related to the all the farmers all over the india is to be stored and this web server is connected to the akash apps so that this uh, one to one relation should be showed that the database is to be stored in form uh, completely and the farmer can uh, getting the information properly so due to this ai diagram i want to uh, develop the apps for the akash and uh, i have the some little bit the confusion is that uh, if we created the entity as the farmers uh, the lots of the farmers in the india and uh, the all the information should be stored in the akash app as the database then uh, it's uh, difficult for uh, me that uh, to connect the, all the entities to the all the database and uh, gathering the information in the database and the retrieving the information in the database for for the farmers so a little bit confusing uh, for this ai diagram ki how to getting the information by the farmers and how to retrieve the information to the farmers okay so that is a separate question which is the interface the er diagram only models what is stored in the database now again there seems to be some confusion uh, you would have a centralized database which tracks everything that you have gathered all the information that you have gathered and an app running on the akash tablet which interfaces with this central application uh, central database and applications running on the central database that is probably how you would build it the tablet itself would probably not store too much information whatever information the farmer is entering should probably be transferred to the back end database immediately uh, the only reason to store information in the tablet is maybe you want the farmer to have offline access maybe when they are in the field with no uh, connection to the net they may want to be able to browse some information and so forth so you may want the app to also have local storage uh, which is uh, available offline so that's another aspect so you may want to do one kind of schema design for the back end database which is all the data stored centrally and you may want to do uh, take a subset of this and store it on the tablet subset meaning some of the relations and within those relations only some of the rows are stored in the tablet uh, because the tablet's memory is limited you can't store everything in a tablet uh, and then there is the interface uh, you know what what kind of things should you record uh, uh, so you kept mentioning farmer as an entity there are many entities farmer is one of the entities like i said field is an entity um, the uh, pesticides used are entities the fertilizers used are entities because they have information the pesticide has information about it fertilizer has extra information about the fertilizer so these are all meaningful entities uh, then there is uh, the issue of weather now weather is uh, kind of funny how do you model it in an er diagram it's temporal there are readings at different stations at different points in time it turns out that the er modeling approach as originally described and the version we have looked at in the book in for the most part does not deal very well with temporal information so if you have a series of recordings of uh, weather uh, you know temperature rainfall humidity whatever it's kind of difficult to uh, push it into the er modeling approach so sometimes it these kinds of things which are readings a set of readings at different times uh, you may want to uh, just create tables out of it directly uh, because the er approach is not particularly good at it um, or you could have each reading as an entity that would work uh, then you can say that every single reading is an entity and then a reading is at a point in time what is the humidity uh, you know the uh, rainfall on the previous uh, hour or day or whatever and so forth all of that could be one entity it's a little artificial but if you want to use the er model for tracking uh, such statistics uh, then you may want to uh, create artificial entities like this that makes life relatively easy so this entity is uh, related to a particular location which location was this were these readings taken and the attributes of the entity would be like temperature precipitation uh, humidity and so on so uh, like this you can take all the data which you want to represent and come up with an er model 
and the initial focus should be on the back end ER model and later you can decide what parts of it will reside on the front end. Um, and then you can decide the functionality of the app and eventually build it. So we are going to look at how to build web apps. Uh, uh, Akash, uh, you know, an Android app is a little different from a web app. We are not covering it in this course, but there is plenty of material available, uh, including some from uh, the NMEICT program itself on how to develop applications for Akash. There is information. Uh, so if you contact the uh, workshop team, they will tell you where to get further information. So let me take some questions from chat. One of the questions uh, related to the ER diagram is, why is there no double line between participant and course? So let me show you the, uh, uh, here we are. We have the ER diagram. Uh, there is course and user or participant, whatever, uh, it's the same thing. Uh, so why is there no double line over here between the user and the course? And it depends on whether you want to allow users to register before they are registered for a course. And in fact, Moodle allows this. Uh, so you can have a two-step process where you first uh, log in and register to Moodle and later on somebody can enroll you in a course. So initially you are not enrolled in any course, you are just a guest. Moodle does allow this. Um, so we are going to not put a double line there. Um, the next question is, uh, where can we add timestamp to assignment and uh, submission uh, relations? Okay, so uh, assignment and submission are in our particular model are entity sets. So uh, we can have a time for assignment, we actually have two timestamps, one is start and end. We actually had that already. Assignment had a start and an end. What we did not do was uh, submission itself. So let me see if I can add to this diagram here. Give me a second. Submission is an entity set. Uh, now, what are the attributes? Again, we could model it uh, using something called weak entity sets, which we will come up with. But for the moment, let's assume there's an internally generated ID. When you make a submission, the database system creates an ID. That's probably how it's implemented. Um, now, you want to have a, a timestamp. Then you may want to have a file, because many things have uh, one or more files. So let's say, uh, for simplicity, we have just one file. So there's a file associated with it. Uh, and then some submissions allow uh, text to be entered directly. So text and so forth. There may be many more fields for submission. There may be comments back from the instructor or the teaching assistant, and then replies to that comment and so forth. So there could be many fields here. So this is where the timestamp would come in the submission. Uh, the next question is, um, could you let us know why you removed timestamp from the ERD? Yeah, so I did not add it. I, uh, so what happened is, I started drawing timestamp as an attribute of the submitted by. So I'll just show it to you here. Yeah, I started adding timestamp as an attribute of submitted by, and then I realized I was making a mistake and moved the timestamp back to submission. So I'm doing this on the fly, you know, this was not a setup. Uh, I had not thought of Moodle as an one of the things. So we're doing it on the fly. Sometimes mistakes will happen. Um, sometimes you correct it quickly. Sometimes it may still be there. If any of you find uh, wrong decision in this, uh, you can let us know. Another question is, is there an entity called login or is it a relationship? So uh, the question is, when I log in, should Moodle track the fact that I'm logged in in the database. So of course the web app is going to track the fact that I'm logged in. But should Moodle actually record information in the database about when all I logged in and so forth? If so, should the login be an entity or should it be a relationship and so forth? So if you want to track history of users, um, you could, uh, like I said, the ER model is not very good at keeping track of temporal information. But one uh, way out of all problems is to create new entities for everything. So a particular login could be an entity, and then it has a login time, logout time, who is the user, and so forth. So yes, you could uh, create login as an entity. The next question is, total participants.
participation and partial participation. So, I think we saw this here, maybe this question was already answered. A uh, user, uh, if a user had to be registered for a course, then the uh, participation of user in over here uh, participant would be total. But we decided that is not so. On the other hand, a submission must be submitted by user. It cannot exist without being associated with a user who submitted it. Therefore, the participation of submission in submitted by is total. Could you add an entity for CH module of Moodle and explain its relations? Um, I'm not sure what CH module of Moodle is. Um, maybe that's a typo. So, um, yeah, we are only looking at a few modules, assignment, uh, but there are many more modules, wiki and uh, zillion other things, quizzes, a uh, whole bunch of other stuff. So, for each of those, there would be a corresponding ER diagram. So, the next last question which I am going to take now is, why do not we have a user to assignment relationship? So, if you look at the screen here, uh, there is user to submission and then submission to assignment. The question is, why do not we have a direct relationship between user and assignment? Um, I suppose one could, but it would be redundant. We already, uh, so uh, if you want to track something uh, about a relationship between a user and an assignment without an associated submission, yes, then you could have it. For example, um, a teacher might wish to assign certain assignments to certain students. That is, you divide the class up and say that, uh, you know, group A do assignment 1, group B do assignment 2. In which case, you would want to have a relationship between user and assignment, which says this user is supposed to do this assignment. And uh, then you would need such a relationship. Uh, in the uh, Moodle implementation as of now, I do not believe that is supported. Maybe it is and I am not aware of it. But what we have is an assignment is for a course and a user is associated with the course. So, every course uh, student is allowed to do every assignment. Therefore, there is no need for a direct relationship here. Uh, the last question is on strong and weak entities uh, sets and I am going to do that and then come back to this diagram and address that. Uh, okay, let me take me one more question. Um, are there thumb rules for drawing ER diagram and what tools can you use for drawing ER diagram? So, there are actually quite a few uh, tools available for drawing ER diagram. Uh, there is a tool called Dia which is available cross platform. It is an open source tool, DIA. Sorry, it did not appear here. Let me rewrite it. Dia, that is a tool which you can use for doing all kinds of diagrams. Uh, that is kind of the open source uh, version of uh, VCO, which is a Microsoft tool, which some of you may have access to. And then there are some other um, uh, proprietary commercial tools for uh, ER diagrams. There is something called ERWIN and then there are a few more tools. Uh, so, I have put up a, a page on Moodle which discusses the tool options. Um, now, this, each of these tools supports several different uh, ER diagramming notations. They support the Chen notation, uh, then they support another notation called IDE1FX um, and they support UML. All of them support UML class diagrams. So, our notation is really a variant of the UML class diagram. So, your best bet is to go to the UML tool and use the tools they have in the UML section to uh, create classes and an entity is basically just like a class. Uh, so, what we did in Dia is uh, uh, you know just fool around with some of the options to remove unnecessary symbols appearing and what is left with is uh, uh, class uh, box which looks exactly like our entity boxes. Relationships are present in UML, so we can use them as is. And attributes of relationships are also present in UML, we use them as is. And uh, then there are a few more things like a double diamond which uh, are not there in UML. So, we hacked some of those by drawing extra lines. Um, and then there are uh, weak entity sets which I will come to later. Double diamonds are also related to that. So, bottom line, uh, there are tools, if you want to use those for your project, uh, do use them. You can of course, just go to any drawing tool and draw it from scratch, but using a tool makes life a lot easier. It is much quicker, there is a small learning curve, but after that your diagrams can be 
drawn very quickly. For example, I don't have to draw a box on the right side. In any of these tools, I can say create a class. And then I can say these are the attributes of the class. This is the name of the class. And the tool draws the box of the right size. You don't have to fool around uh, with uh, drawing actual boxes of the right size. Then you can make connectors. If you move things around, the lines move around. So it's worth using tools to draw AI diagrams. Don't do it by hand or using uh, just a plain drawing tool. Use one of these. In particular, Daya is open source. So you can download it for any platform and use it. OK, so that was a long detour. Uh, so let's uh, stop here.